In this video, we look at trace tables. Tracing execution is a vital skill for understanding program flow and testing the accuracy of an algorithm for logic. It involves examining a printed extract of program code and running through the program. You take each line one at a time and write the current state of each variable in the trace table. Note down any output the program produces. Each variable present in the program should have its own column in the trace table. And a new row should be added under any column if the state of the variable changes. Trace tables are an excellent way to track down logic errors in a program. So let's actually work through this program using a trace table. So we've got a fairly simple program here. Now we need to start by identifying any variables in the program and put each one in its own column to create the trace table. So we can see the use of a variable called number. So we've got a column for that. We can see another variable called counter. So we've got a column for that. And we can see a variable called total. So we've got a column for that. And we've also added an output window here so we can show what's happening during the program if any output goes to the screen. Now note the first line of the program is going to execute and it's going to ask the user to enter a number. Now for our example working through this trace table, we're going to assume they enter the integer 5. So now we start tracing for the program, taking each line one at a time. We've hit the first line, so enter a number as output to the screen and the user enters 5. That gets assigned to the variable number, so the contents of number have changed, so we've updated our trace table. On to the next line, total equals 1. So we've updated our trace table to show that the variable total is now containing the value 1. We now enter the start of a for loop. For counter equals 1, so that's initialising the variable counter to 1, so we update our trace table to number, and number is currently 5. Total equals total times counter, so total equals 1 times 1. So 1 gets overridden with 1 and we're showing that there. I know the contents haven't strictly changed but we are overwriting the contents of total which held 1 with the value 1 so I've put it in there again. We then hit the end of the for loop and that increments the counter so counter is now going from 1 to 2 so I update the trace table. We're back at the beginning of the for loop which says for counter equals one to number, or number is five. We enter the loop again, total equals total times counter. So total equals the current total one times the value of counter, which is two, one times two is two. So the contents of total have now updated, and I've shown that in the trace table. We reach the end of the for loop and increment the value of counter by one. We're back at the start of the for loop and we see we still need to go round it again. Total now becomes equal to total times counter. Well, total holds two, counter holds three, two times three is six. And we place that back in total. So again, we've updated that and I've shown that in the trace table. We're at the end of the for loop and we increment counter from three to four. We're back at the start. Do we need to enter this for loop again? Well, let's have a look. For counter, which is currently four, to number, which is five. Well, we've not hit five yet, and the value is four, so let's go in again. Total equals total times counter. So total equals six times four, which is 24. And we replace total with 24. So another line in our trace table. We increment counter from four to five. We now check whether we need to enter the for loop again. For counter equals one to number. For counter is five and number is five. So yes, we do need to enter the for loop one last time. Total equals total times counter. So total is currently 24, counter is five. 24 times five is 120. And again, we update our trace table to show that the value of total has changed. 
next counter, so counter increments from five to six. We go back to the start of the for loop where we now check, but now we discover the condition for entering the for loop is not met because counter is now six. So we exit the for loop and we hit the output line, output total, or the current value in the trace table for total is 120. And we've put that in the output window. So what is this program doing? Well, it's outputting the factorial of the number entered. So if I entered five, which I did in my example, it gives you the result of the calculation, one times two times three times four times five. That's the factor of five. You can trace through any program like this using trace tables, and it really helps you to understand algorithms and find problems and bugs. Thank you.